everyone, I am Rebecca from Chem Knits, and welcome to the recap of the September 2021 Chem Knits Dialogue Livestream. Last month, we took a look at the storming strike of lightning and used it to create this stormy purple and gray colorway. But there is a bit of a surprise. Uh, on two of the four skeins that I have here in the pan, we use zip ties to apply some resist, which hopefully will give us some beautiful pops of white on the yarn. Now, the yarn base that I used here was Knit Picks Hawthorne Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 80% Superwash Fine Highland Wool, 20% polyamide, and if you want to learn more about the base, I will have a Knit Picks affiliate link down in the video description. But let's take this out of the pan. So here is one of those resist points, and the two stains with resists, I actually applied that resist um, together on the skein. So here we have 200 grams of yarn and in these two cases I coupled the two skeins together and you can see a bit of that resist. Um, but I figured we may as well rinse it a bit first before we take those zip ties off just in case we have some bleeding. But two of the skeins have no resist because I thought it would be fun and I was debating whether or not I wanted that lightning strike on there in the first place. But our dye bath does look clear. And on a Chemnitz personal note, the light on my microwave that's right up there, which has been working again for months after not working for months, just randomly started working again, won't turn on today. Bummer. Okay. Now we do have some lighter patches in here still. That is intentional. Where is our other, here we go. There's also some zip ties that aren't resist that I use as like a handle to keep things from getting tangled. But as we add water, let's also add a little bit of clear dip soap. I don't often show the washing from my live streams, but I did today because I felt it was prudent to give a, risk, a rinse before we open up that resist. And I'm seeing a tiny hint of color, but not bad and not a lot. So I'm going to fill this up with water. All right, and let's just peek. Oh, that's perfect. That's already clear. I'll finish washing out the soap shortly. But first, I'm going to squeeze out most of the water from our resist friends and let's go open these up. All right, here are the two skeins and you can see where we have them linked together with these zip ties. And if we come here and look, you can see that pop of white that is left. Now these zip ties that I use are removable nylon zip ties. So now I can open this up and reveal this resist mark that we have left behind. Now, the reason why I combined uh, the two skeins together is that that made the whole thing thicker um, and it's a little harder on just one width to get as tight of a resist. But what's fun also is you can see that in some places it's really small, in other areas it's a little bit bigger. Here's the second resist point. Ooh, that's a nice big patch. And we've got this white. Um, from the bare yarn left behind here. And so that is just fun and does represent our little lightning strike. I actually polled the chat during the live stream itself to see if I should use the resist um, to add these lightning strikes. And I was a little bit unsure on, I'm still a tiny bit unsure, mainly because I didn't want it to pool and knowing with the resist technique, it's hard with a zip tie. If I were to tie like random patches around the yarn, then maybe I could get some non-repeating elements to it. But these white specks are gonna show up at a pretty consistent interval. But you could randomly mix this yarn in with one of the skeins that doesn't have the resist. And so that could help 
um, mix it up and make those pops of white a little more random. But the nice thing about doing the resist this way is there's enough white that you should get between half to maybe two stitches worth, depending on the gauge you knit with. So I'm going to be really curious to hear which colorway you prefer, if you prefer it with the uh, resist point or not. Yeah, I will be really curious to hear what you all think about the colorways. And honestly, I'll be curious when I add these to my Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations, uh, which sells first. <laughs> because sometimes that surprises me as well. Most of the yarn I dye does end up in my Etsy shop at some point. There will be a link to that in the video description. And uh, the yarn is probably added to the shop a bit before uh, this recap is out. So anyway, I am going to probably do one final rinse. I'm going to put the yarn through my spin dryer, wash our glorious, wash our glorious yarn mop off camera, and then we'll come back and look at the finished colorways once they're dry. Here is the finished dry yarn. And uh, I have to say I'm torn. I am really glad that I did the resist because as an exercise and demonstration, it's a lot of fun to do. But I think that personally, I prefer our moody, stormy purple and gray yarn to the yarn where we had the resist with the white flash. But I did ask chat during the live stream and people wanted to see the resist and I wanted to do it too, but sometimes, sometimes I get torn between a dyeing technique that I want to do because I want to do that technique, but when I know I will probably prefer the other colorway personally. So therefore, I am really curious to know which you prefer. Would you rather use this stormy yarn with these small pops of white that'll come up through your project? Or would you prefer to have something that is overall moodier and doesn't really have that contrast in there? Please leave your vote down in the comments section. And if one of these colorways sells before the other, I will try to leave a little update here in the video. <laughs> However, there is a chance that the yarn has not yet sold and it could still be available in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. There will be links down in the video description. I am a little tempted to rescan this colorway because I think I would like it better if I see these pops of white a little bit more randomly distributed throughout the yarn versus placed in this more repeating kind of way. However, even though I think that this is a case where I think that the skein would be more aesthetically pleasing to me rescanned, I'm not going to rescan it. And that is because I think it's helpful as someone who loves to buy yarn to see what it looks like as it was dyed because this kind of flat lay gives me some information and that is that the white specks are not randomly placed throughout the entire skein, which means that they will show up in a regular type of pattern as I'm knitting. That doesn't necessarily mean that they will pull, it just is something for me to keep in mind as I am planning whatever project I want to do with it. And therefore, I will not be reskaining these today. And of course, I think if I was going to work with these myself, I would probably take one of these lightning strike skeins and one of the ones without that white resist and blend them together so that way I could add a little bit more randomness to where that those white patches show up. Because if I was going to do rather than two rows of one, two rows of another, but if I was going to mix it up in a random sequence, it would almost give a more random star-like effect to my project. I love this colorway so much. I always enjoy pairing uh, black and purple or gray and purple together, but I love those pinker flashes and then the more bluish purple with that gray. It just really, really has me super happy. And I have a feeling I will explore something similar more in the future. Our yarn mop is a delightful confection of color, but also shows a little bit why 
I didn't really want to go for a speckled colorway. This yarn has a lot of white in it, which sort of evokes that lightning strike, but it doesn't feel moody or stormy. And so having a really white base with these darker colors is gorgeous, but for me doesn't capture the mood of the photo in the same kind of way, even though I absolutely love this result. I think I steam set it a bit in the middle, um, but I think that just layering the colors, wiping the colors off of my gloves onto the yarn, and it just gave a very layered, beautiful effect. And now it is time for my favorite part of the Chemnitz Dialogue, and that is where I share the yarn that you dyed inspired by the same inspiration photo. Now, I'm very curious to see how many people decided to keep a little bit of white in there versus who went for the stormier sky overall. I think with my colorways, which are quite purple, I definitely could have added more gray for the water in there. But honestly, I love purple, so that's what I was drawn to. It is really, really fun to see how different people interpret the same photo into yarn. If you would like to participate in the Chemnitz Dialogue going forward, just share the yarn you dye inspired by the inspiration photo on Instagram with the hashtag Chemnitz Dialogue or reply to the inspiration photo on the Chemnitz Facebook page with a photo comment and I'll include as many as I can in the recap. It's easiest for me if you submit um, single photos, even if you submit multiple single photos versus collages or things with text on them, it makes it easier for me to incorporate into the video. But again, thank you so much to everyone who joined for the live stream and everyone who participated for the dialogue. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and don't forget to subscribe and make sure those notifications are turned on so you never miss a new dying live stream. I do post videos at least twice a week with a lot of other bonus content in there as well. And while I try to schedule the dialogue live streams in advance, sometimes they pop up a little bit more last minute, and you really don't want to miss them. Thank you so much for watching!